So um, jumping uh, right into uh, the first module, again, uh, just to kind of ramp you up, give you a brief overview of administration with SharePoint. Uh, you're probably familiar with the fact that SharePoint itself uh, has had multiple editions and different waves, as we call them, over the years. Uh, it really started out with uh, SharePoint uh, 2001, the 2001 wave, which included a, a tool called SharePoint Team Services, but also included another tool called SharePoint Portal Server uh, 2001. Now, uh, in terms of administration, it was very, very lacking in the 2001 time space. Uh, the actual uh, engine that ran SharePoint, where the documents were stored, was the same engine that was used by Exchange servers. So it was the, uh, the JET database uh, with a streaming media file that was associated with it. So it uh, wasn't very wieldy, uh, very difficult to do things. There wasn't even really a good admin interface at all. You had to do a lot of things with the command prompt. Needless to say, uh, you know, the amount of clients that we had on that wave, I could, I could count on one hand. Uh, it really didn't get a lot of, uh, a lot of inertia at that time. But, but we did see it as, you know, a Microsoft strategy, you know, for uh, moving forward, for storing documents, for collaboration. So, again, that's when we started really doing some serious work on the book. And it was the 2003 wave when things got moved over uh, fully into a SQL Server. So from the back end, we now have a lot of tools, you know, SQL tools to be able to administer and maintain uh, the, uh, the databases, to be able to do some more sophisticated things with them. And then uh, uh, Microsoft also introduced the uh, SharePoint Central Admin tool, which was a, uh, a tool that was then, uh, useful for being able to go in and, and make changes to the environment, web-based uh, changes. Of course, the, the downside to SharePoint Central Admin is that, of course, if there's any problem with your SharePoint, uh, you're effectively locked out of it uh, because it runs on top of SharePoint. So that's one of the reasons in the, uh, the 2010 wave of tools, Microsoft introduced PowerShell administration to, to give you the ability to go in and, uh, and make some changes. But um, the 2007 wave, I should also point out, was one of the first waves that really got a lot of third-party adoption involved. In fact, it's rare nowadays that we deploy a SharePoint environment that doesn't have some type of third-party component as part of it. Uh, the third-party space in terms of overall dollars is much, much larger than the SharePoint space by itself. So you can see that there's a big ecosystem built around it. Uh, you know, we've been working with this ecosystem for the past decade with a lot of great companies that are out there uh, that do this stuff. So that's transitioned over into the latest wave. And then, of course, the 2013 wave, uh, again, we'll be talking a little bit more about the uh, some of the new features and capabilities that have been added into 2013 in terms of administration. Um, I've, uh, we have a, a chart that we developed uh, because I didn't see a lot of good information up in Microsoft about this, but this chart was just kind of a useful uh, a chart to give you an understanding of the differences between the various versions of SharePoint 2013. Uh, there's effectively uh, three different versions. There's SharePoint Foundation, uh, which is the, the quote-unquote free version of SharePoint. Uh, there's SharePoint Standard, and then there's SharePoint Enterprise Edition. Uh, I've included a, uh, another column in there just to show you which service applications can be consumed for cross-farm, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a, in a few minutes here. But basically, as you can see, you start to get more and more functionality uh, with the, the later versions. So the, the, uh, you know, the more you buy, the, the more you're getting access. Uh, now, some organizations, we do have some clients that are perfectly suited for SharePoint Foundation. They're, they're fine with it. They don't need, you know, some of the uh, uh, some of the advanced uh, business tools that uh, the server provides. Uh, but from an administration perspective, you are limited in a, in a lot of sense. So there's, uh, you know, there's there's not a lot of the advanced search features. One of the things people don't realize is that you know the fast search features, for example, only exist in the standard and enterprise edition. So search itself is, is fairly limited. It's basically relying on the legacy type of search that you had. Uh, and then you're missing other things like web analytics, uh, word automation, PowerPoint automation, a lot of the types of things that, that major organizations may want to have. So uh, to take a look uh, when you're t deciding you know, which version you need to use, uh, match it with this feature set. If you don't necessarily need all those features, you may actually you know, just be fine uh, deploying SharePoint Foundation or SharePoint Standard as opposed to uh, SharePoint Enterprise. Outside of this as well, there's other products that are related to SharePoint. Uh, there's what's called Project Server, which allows you to do some advanced uh, you know, things with the uh, Microsoft Project Files and 
and uh, sharing them uh, together with a large group and organizing projects and collaborating together on those projects. Uh, and then there's also what are called the, uh, the Office Web Apps, which in 2010 were their own service applications. Now they've been separated out as, uh, as, uh, as a separate set of services that provide for the web-based access to things like, uh, like Word, uh, Excel, PowerPoint, et cetera. Some of the tools that SharePoint administrators use, uh, there's the one I've mentioned already, which is SharePoint Central Administration. I'll be referring to it as SPCA a lot during this presentation. Uh, and then there's a, a, a actual administration of the individual site or site collection directly from within a site itself. Uh, so for example, you know, if you're going in uh, to an individual SharePoint site, you can actually go in and, uh, you know, modify some of the site settings themselves. So this is where a lot of administration uh, from the site collection administrators takes place, as opposed to the SharePoint Central Admin, which is where a lot of the farm administration takes place. Um, so we have those particular tools. As well, there's also, of course, Microsoft PowerShell. Uh, PowerShell being one of the uh, most, no pun intended, powerful tools that you could use. Uh, and uh, I, I really want to emphasize that, that you do need to understand PowerShell. I'll be going into some, some of the uh, administration things that we can do with PowerShell in one of the later modules. Uh, but uh, if you try to administer SharePoint without PowerShell, you're going to be leaving out a lot. Uh, and in fact, there are certain things that can only be done with PowerShell. Uh, services like request management, for example, um, you know, creating a web application with uh, uh, classic mode authentication instead of claims, for example, can only be done via PowerShell. So it's important to understand how to do that. Again, we'll, we'll look at this in a later module. But those are some of the tools, and as well, there's uh, there's additional tools that run on the, the servers like uh, um, IIS Administrator, uh, which you'll be using a lot as a SharePoint administrator uh, to do things like uh, um, add certificates, uh, to be able to uh, change IP addresses on individual sites. All those can only be done from within the IIS Manager, so it's, it's definitely another tool uh, that would be at your disposal. Uh, and then uh, you still can use some of the legacy tools. There's a command line tool that uh, should be very familiar to any SharePoint administrator who had to work with SharePoint 2007, and that's called FTS ADM. That tool is still around, however, it is being deprecated, and all of the functionality in FTS ADM is being replaced uh, with uh, PowerShell. Now, there's a few very minor things that can still only be done within FTS ADM, even in SharePoint 2013. So it's still around and still there. Uh, namely, if you if you need to modify some of the people picker uh, 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 functions, for example, if you wanted to set up a um, a SharePoint domain to be able to use the account uh, an account in a different domain that uh, doesn't trust it, you would have to use FDS ADM to uh, uh, to be able to configure those people picker settings. But uh, in most cases, nearly all the functionality has been moved over to PowerShell. So. Uh, so I wouldn't get too comfortable with using FTS ADM because it, it will be going away. Uh, but as well, you know, from a SQL perspective, the, uh, the entire data tier of SharePoint is down there at the, uh, at the SQL Server level. So you've got uh, this, this huge amount of administration that needs to be done from here, from within SQL Server Manager, managing all your databases, uh, doing uh, maintenance plans. We'll talk about the importance of doing that. Uh, you know, backup and restore from your uh, uh, from SharePoint Central Admin, and then a new features like the Always On Availability Group, uh, which I'll demo uh, at a later point, uh, 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 later module during the SQL module itself. So another very important tool is uh, to get used to using uh, SQL Management Studio, which of course has its own scripting interface as well. So you can make, uh, create uh, transaction uh, transaction SQL or TSQL uh, commands. Uh, that would uh, then run as different queries. And these are used in a lot of cases. In fact, we set them up in almost any SharePoint environment uh, to do things such as shrinking the sizes of your, uh, of your log files, uh, going through and doing uh, database consistency checks, uh, and, uh, and other features which can only be done from the scripted interface from within SQL. So again, we'll take a look at that, uh, that at a later module. 